My name is Jim Ayler, and we're in the second week of Manassas Goes Country. Oh, yeah. So you want to see my hat? I brought it right here just for you. Mm -hmm. Do I look country? At our, uh, at our last service, it was really funny because we had a guy visiting that, uh, that is actually a Colorado cowboy. And he just stumbled on to the church this week. I mean, he was just in Manassas for some reason and came up and he said, I was kind of worried about whether I'd be dressed right. Well, he looked so much better than all of us over there trying to look country. It was, it was really funny. But anyway, he made me look bad. I don't like that at all. So today we're bouncing off of that song, My Wish. So let me ask you, do you know what the last thing Jesus did before he ascended into heaven? I, well... Nobody knows. Okay, that's good. I love a place that doesn't answer. That way I can answer my own questions. But anyway, he, this is what he did. He blessed them. He blessed his disciples. They're all gathered around. And here, let me read it to you. Luke chapter 24. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken into heaven. The last thing he did was he blessed them. I want to tell you about a very powerful moment in my family's history. It happened when my daughter turned 13. As she was approaching that birthday, uh, something caught my attention about how uh, good Jewish families uh, bless their kids. Well, you know, when, they, when the girls turn 13, they have a bath mitzvah. When the boys turn 12, they have a, a bar mitzvah. And I was trying to figure out about that time what that, all, what that was all about. And it is a rite of passage, but more than anything else, it's where they get a chance to bless their children. So I thought about that, and I talked that over with my daughter, and we decided we would have, for her 13th birthday, a service of blessing. And so we let her pick out the place, and uh, one of her favorite places, in fact, is uh, Big Meadows up on the Skyline Drive. I'm sure many of you have been there. You know, it's that Big Meadow on the top of the hill, and... Actually, it's kind of a tr family tradition for our family to go there. We go there two or three times a year. See, my dad grew up in the mountains of Tennessee, and then he was located in Hampton, Virginia. That's where I grew up. Well, Hampton is kind of flat, and so he just couldn't take that for very long. So two or three times a year, we headed for the mountains. And by the time I was five years old, Big Meadows became the place to go to. Enough mountains, enough stuff to do. It worked well for us. But it kind of became special for us. In fact... As I grew older and as I got married and as I had kids, we kept doing that. And we're still doing that to this day. But anyway, my daughter, when it came time for her service of blessing, she said, I want to do uh, Big Meadows. And so what we did is we invited about 16 people to go with us, uh, people that had helped raise her. We also went through her list of friends and figured out which ones could figure out what a blessing was and actually be able to pull that off with a straight face. You know, and so we, and we, we had three of her friends and uh, some other folks and we went and we had a dinner at the lodge, and then after dinner we went out to the meadow, and we went to this rock that my daughter had picked out, out in the middle of the meadow. It was perfect setting. It was, the sun was setting, so the sky was, had all those sunset colors. The deer were out, you know how they come out that time of night, so they were all over the meadow. And my daughter sat on that rock, and uh, each person blessed her. Now what we did is we, when we asked people, we said, now when you come, this is what you have to do to come. You have to write out a blessing for her. And of course, I got a lot of questions. Well, what does that mean? And so I had to explain over and over again, well, a blessing is when you think of your best wishes for her future and then turn that into a prayer. And so all these people came with their, their blessing and then one by one, as she sat on that rock, we went up and we'd lay our hand on her shoulder and we would read the prayer to God. Now you talk about... Um, that's pretty tricky on my part. I didn't realize what I was doing at the time. But you know how many times you say, pray for my kids, and people say, yeah, I'll pray for your kids, and you don't know whether they do or not, you know? You're just kind of leaving it to them, and, and the odds are they're not. You know, they might go, bless that kid, you know, or something. But this, you're making them write it out, and, they're make, and you're making them pray it right in front of you. It works really good. So anyway, here's all these people, and, they, and of course my mother, her grandmother is the first one to do it. So she goes up, and she starts crying. So then everybody after that had to cry as they did theirs. But it was just a special moment in that atmosphere. And in the middle of it, my sister kind of pokes me and says, look at that cloud up above us. And when I looked up, there was this cloud shaped like a ring 
right over top of us. It was a special moment. But when I really figured out when it was special was when we got home. Because Dara took, that's my daughter's name, Dara, she took all those blessings and she put them in a scrapbook. And I noticed she would read them a lot. In fact, she has that scrapbook to this day. And then about a week later, she comes to me, she says, Dad, I want a new Bible. Well, you know what you do when your kid wants a new Bible. You say, okay, let's go right now before they change their mind. And you head it on down to the bookstore. And I said, any Bible you want. Of course, she picked out the most expensive one. But that's no problem because she wanted a Bible. So I forked out the money, man. We got her a new Bible. And it was a nice Bible. In fact, I wanted to steal it a few times. But I didn't. And so anyway, she wanted that. And then she comes around and she says, you know, Dad, I want to go to a Christian school. Well, now that wasn't my idea because tuition... That is not my idea. But she searched around. She found this little, uh, um, well, this little Christian school that kind of operated on a shoestring budget. And uh, I made a deal with them, so I caught a couple of classes, and she did that. But the neat thing was is how she, she just seemed to, to grow in the Lord in amazing ways after that. I remember about a month after the service of blessing, she came and she was talking to her mom, and she said, you know, Mom, I'm watching all the teenagers that come to see you and mom, you and dad, and, and how they're talking about all the drama and dating and how they're crying about this and that and all the other. And, and she said, uh, you know, I, I'm going to start praying that I don't have to go through all that. That just when the time comes, God will bring the guy around and, and that'll be that. The guy I'm supposed to marry. And, uh, you know, Dads love it when you pray those kind of prayers. In fact, I said, I will agree with that prayer. And so I went for that. But anyway, as, uh, well, let me just tell you how it ended. Uh, um, if she was here and telling this story, she would tell you how eight years after that service of blessing, um, we were back at that rock. But this time, she was getting married. And she was marrying the guy that, Eight years before, we didn't know him, but all these people in their prayers, almost all of them said they prayed for her future spouse, that he would be this and this and this. And, uh, you know, it's amazing that I love my son-in-law because as soon as they announced it was a girl, I hated my son-in-law. So the fact that I love him now is just absolutely amazing. But anyway, it's a neat thing. And my son, a year later, he's, it's his birthday, and, and he says, man, I want to have one of those because he saw the power of that service of blessing. Well, I want to talk to you this morning about the power of blessing someone. I mean, Jacob in Genesis, Jacob wrestled with an angel all night, and he said, I'm not going to let go of you until you bless me. I mean, he knew the power of blessing. In fact, during that fight, he had his hip dislocated, which is pretty painful, and yet he held on until he got the blessing. In fact, Jacob was kind of a rascal. He, would, he kind of connived with his mom, and, and he faked out his dad was blind, and he sort of faked him out so that he got the blessing that his older brother was supposed to get. But if Jacob thought that much of the power of blessing, maybe we need to know about the power of blessing as well. Now, I'm not talking about praying for people. You know, the church is really good about praying for people that are sick or in trouble. We do that really well. In fact, my definition of a blessing may be praying for somebody when they're not sick or in trouble. You know, because a blessing is, this is my wish for them, and you turn that into a prayer. You turn that into a prayer. Now, I'm not talking about, um, in fact, as I've tried to get this message together I've asked a lot of my friends that said so blessing I want to preach about blessing what does that mean to you and uh, they would say well I'm blessed and so I feel like I need to bless others okay I, I'm all for that random acts of kindness doing good things for people but that's not what I'm talking about okay that's not it I'm not talking about people that just say uh, um, God bless you you know that real fast kind of thing that people do I'm not talking about that I'm not talking about how to get God's blessing I'm not talking about when somebody says, well, Ralph was there, God bless him. You know, that's code for uh, Ralph is a piece of work. You know, that's what that's code for. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about praying your wishes for somebody. And there's power in that. 
There's real power in that. Moses, when he was about to die, let me read it to you in Deuteronomy 33. Uh, he blessed the people. It says, this is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. And then the rest of the chapter is, where, is that blessing. But when he prayed for them, what he did is he, he prayed for every tribe and he prayed exactly what he wanted God to do for each one of those tribes. So I'm not talking about, um, in fact, I, I'm, I'm all for you saying, bless you, you know, but I'm just, I'm talking about when you, we get a little more specific than that. I think that's when the power really enters that. Instead of this blanket, um, bless you. Just be a little more specific in your blessing. I know one man that tried to catch his kids as they were leaving the house every morning. He tried to catch them and bless them on the way out. And so he'd stand by the door, and as they went out, he'd kind of put his hand on their head and, and try to bless them, you know, give a little blessing as they left the house. And his daughter got to the place where she didn't want to leave the house until she got Dad's blessing because she could see how different her day was after she got the blessing. So I want to encourage you. I mean, think about it. If we, if everyone here, just kind of got in the habit of praying blessings for people. Think how many people would be impacted by that. So I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to bless people because, well, it empowers other people. You might remember last week I, came, I gave you three little prayers uh, which were really about empowering you. That prayer of, I'm not, but you are. I can't, but you can. I don't want to, but you want to. And you live in me, God. Those were things that empowered you. But this week, we're talking about how you can empower others. I mean, with that song, I like that line. It says, more than anything, more than anything, my wish for you. Well, you know, when you uh, make a wish, there's, you know, that does a little something. But what if you take the wish and turn it into a prayer? Because, you see, prayer has power. In fact, when you bless people through a prayer, you can change somebody's history. I mean, their history has them going this way, and you bless them, and events start to change, and you can actually change their future history. I learned a long time ago that I can go, if through prayer, I can go where I can't go. Like, uh, you teenagers are going to hate me for saying this, and so I'm just sorry about that. I'll, I'll do something for you soon. But when my kids were dating, I learned that I could be, uh, yeah, they didn't know what was going on. They thought they were off by themselves. But I was on my knees at home praying. And they would come home and go, man, we got interrupted here, we got interrupted there, we don't know what happened. I knew what happened. You know, this morning, as I was praying this morning, I, I, all that stuff, uh, you know, the new airstrikes in Iraq, I wanted to go to the Situation Room, and I wanted to be, make a difference in the White House. But they wouldn't let me through the gate, you know? But through prayer, I can affect what's going on in rooms like that that are totally secure. You can go through prayer, you can go into places that you can't go in prayer. Also, one time I tried to figure out, what is the limit of prayer? What can prayer actually do? I mean, what's the limit? And after thinking about that a long time, I came up with this answer. I think somebody gave me this answer. Prayer can do whatever God can do. That's pretty limitless. And once you realize that prayer can do whatever God can do, your prayers start to change. So what if we take that kind of power and pray blessings on people? Also, I want to encourage you to bless people because it changes your perspective. You know, the Bible says, bless those that, well, it tells us to bless our enemies. And I know that when I have done, I haven't always done that, but when I have, I have turned a corner. It has changed my perspective. In fact, when somebody starts to get under my skin, I've got real sensitive skin. You know, I mean, people get under my skin real easy. And when that starts to happen, I have learned that if I'll sit down and write like a one paragraph blessing for that person and sort of memorize that and every time I see that person or I'm about to meet with them, I'll just say that prayer, that blessing on them, it has changed my attitude toward that person. 
There have been times when, I, you probably don't do this, but I'm, you know, I got a little anger in me. So I've gotten to the place where I really resent some people. And when I get to that place, I call it, that's when the root of bitterness has kind of taken hold of you. And when I get to that place of bitterness and resentment, and I can't seem to let it go, and I'm praying, God, help me let this go. There have been several times when he said, I want you to write out a blessing for them. And sometimes, most of the time, he'll give me how many pages he wants me to write because he knows if it's up to me, I'll write one sentence, and that's going to be it. So he'll say, I want you to write two pages or three pages. One time I had to write five pages. I was really mad at that guy. Five pages of blessing. And so I sit down with my pencil and paper, and I start writing. I say, God bless him. Bless him in his family life. Bless him in his marriage. Make his marriage where it's just a joy, where they just really enjoy each other. And pray, God, I pray for his kids. I pray that they'll be a joy to him. I pray that, that they'll grow up to be all that you want them to be. I know that he's having one, you know, some trouble with one of those kids. God, I just pray that you'll fix that. You know how to fix that, God. So bless him by fixing that. And then I'll pray for his health. Lord, I want him to be healthy. And I pray that you'll just bless him with good health. I know right now he's work, walking with a limp. I don't know what that's all about. But Lord, just fix that. In fact, go into his body, and if there's any cell, that any of those little cells, if any of them not doing what they're supposed to do, just, Lord, fix that. You know, that's kind of a cancer kind of praying there when you do that. And so I'd pray this prayer, and I'd say, Lord, I pray for his prosperity. I pray, Lord, that you'll meet all of his needs, but God, I know he really likes to have a nice car. And I know you're going to meet his needs, and you're going to give him something that gets him where he needs to be, but maybe on that one. You could give him a nice car because he so enjoys nice cars. Well, when you're praying for your enemy like that, and so what I'd do is I'd take those papers after I'd written them and I'd go into my bedroom, I'd close the door. I'll I, I, I tell you what I'd do. I'd get down on my knees next to my bed and i kind of lean across my bed with those papers and i read that blessing to God as a prayer. And it's amazing how my heart has changed when I leave that bedroom. So I want to encourage you to do that. You know, I, the Bible, well, First Peter, Peter, in his first letter, letter, chapter 3, he says, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because of this you were called so that you might inherit a blessing. You see, as we bless others, it really does kind of bring the blessing back to us. And Jesus, in Luke 6, he said, Bless those who curse you. Now, just in case you thought that meant to do something nice for them, he backs that up with, and pray for those who mistreat you. Also, I want to encourage you to bless people because, well, it opens doors. Well, uh, two weeks ago, I met a man who uh, works at a Harley-Davidson store, and uh, his habit is whenever he sells a Harley, when the person comes to pick it up, he, uh, he says, well, now... One last thing, do you want me to bless your bicycle? Do you want me to bless it? And they kind of go, oh, what does that mean? He says, well, you come out and sit on it, and I'll pray over it. And so more than, <laughs> more than not, they'll go, well, well, sure. I mean, you don't want to turn that kind of stuff down. Nobody does. And so he'll go out there, and they'll sit on the bike. And, of course, he prays that the bike won't have a lot of trouble and that kind of stuff. But he spends more time praying for the rider than he does the bike, of course. But that has opened doors for him. People have started having spiritual conversations with him because of that. In fact, that uh, Harley st uh, store, it may be the only one in the country that actually uh, uh, sponsors a service of blessing. Uh, every couple of months they have a service of blessing where everybody brings their bikes in and they bless the bikes. But it's open doors for him. And he told about one man who uh, was really, uh, didn't really know if he wanted to have his bike blessed or not but finally uh, he started out the door and then he turned around and came back and said yeah go ahead and bless my bike so he did it and and uh just a week later the guy had the front tire blue and uh if you know anything about motorcycle riding i don't know this but they were telling me man when your front tire blows on a motorcycle that's not good because usually it just sends you flying 
But when it happened to this guy, he was able to keep it in control and just slowly pull over to the side of the road. And once he got it fixed, he brought it back to that guy and says, I don't want to ride this again until you've blessed it. <laughs> you know, isn't it great what God does? When I went to Guyana, um, it was a mission trip to Guyana. We had a doctor with us. Now, Guyana is South America. We went way up into the Amazon basin. We flew into the middle of the country. Then we took a boat uh, three days up the upper Mazaruni River uh, to this place. But on day number two, before we went any farther, we had to stop and, uh, where the, the bishop lived. And we had to get the bishop's permission to, to go on this mission trip. And we really didn't think that was going to be a problem because we had doctors with us, you know. It was going to do a lot of people a lot of good. And, but, so I remember three of us on the team went to see the bishop and we're standing bef in front of him. And as we're telling him what we're, we're going to do and, and our plan, he starts shaking his head. And then he starts telling us all the bad experiences they've had with mission trip people. And it looked like he was going to turn us down when suddenly the leader of our team, who's standing between the two of us and the bishop standing here, he just gets down on his knees and he says, Sir, we have come here for your blessing. Will you bless us? And then he just bows his head. And I took that cue and I got down on my knees quickly and, and the other guy did the same. So here's this poor bishop with three people on their knees in front of him asking for, for a blessing. Well, what's he going to do? So he starts with me and he lays his hands on my head and he blesses me and, and then he blesses the lead. And then he, and when he get, but as he blesses the three of us, I could hear in his tone of voice his, uh, his attitude change. And when he had finished blessing us, we stood up, and I remember with a tear running down his face, he said, uh, I have blessed you, now will you bless me? And he got down on his knees, and we prayed a blessing over him. You see, blessings open doors. Now, in case you don't know how to do this, I want to give you a quick lesson on how to do this. There are short blessings, and there are long blessings. I would just suggest if you're going to write a short blessing, if you're going to say a short blessing, that you think of two things, two things you wish for this person. You know, I love the line in the song that just goes, um, uh, may your dreams stay big and your worries stay small. That's a great blessing. But just think of two things that you want God to do for this person. Turn that into a prayer and pray. it. Now, if you're going to do a longer blessing, the way I do that is I just go into every category I can think of. I think about their health. In fact, when I'm praying for somebody's health, one of the lines I like to use is, Lord, just uh, heal them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. You know, that just covers all, all the bases there. So I'll pray that. And another thing I like to pray is somebody taught me how to pray this. I pray for strength for their years. And what that means is the strength they have when, they, when they're young, they'll keep that for their entire life. I pray for their family, I pray for their marriage, I pray for their kids, I pray for their parents, their siblings. Uh, when I'm writing one of these prayers, I pray for, well, this is really good. I pray for the healing of their past. Because, you know, all of us have stuff that happened to us that has affected us, stuff that keeps us awake at night, stuff that we act out way too much. And so I'll just pray that God will heal those memories, that he'll heal that situation in the past so that it doesn't affect them anymore. I'll pray for their job, their career, their prosperity. I'll pray for their education, especially if they're young. I'll pray that they'll, that they'll get the right teachers and they'll be teachers that, that energize them and teachers that teach them the stuff that they need to know. I'll pray that, that God will put into them the fruits of the Spirit of love and joy and peace. I'll pray that uh, keep their worries small and their dreams big. But also, you have to add a section on that's spiritual. So I pray that God will open their eyes so that they can see what God is doing for them all around. It's amazing to me, the people that God is doing amazing things for, and they don't even see it. They're just, they're just into the complaint mode, you know? And they just see the negative about everything. So I just pray that God will open their eyes to the goodness of God and the blessings around them. I also like to add to, to my prayers that uh, prayer that Paul prayed, I think it was for the Philippians, where he said, I want them to know the love of God. I want them to know the, the breadth, the height, the width, the depth. And you're looking at that and go, wait a minute, that's four dimensions, and yet there's only really three dimensions. And yet Paul somehow creates this sentence where it's about, there's four dimensions. Well, God's love is so big, it sort of goes into four dimensions. 
So I love to add those to my blessings. All right, so that's a quick tutorial on how to write a blessing, how to say a blessing on somebody. Now, I just want to challenge you right now. And my challenge is this, is that right now as you sit here, you let God bring to mind two people that he wants you to bless. And then I want you to commit to yourself right now that this week you will sit down and you will write out a blessing for those two people. It can be a short one, it can be a long one, doesn't really matter to me. But you do what God leads you to do, and that's that you pray that blessing before the end of the week. So that's my challenge to you. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you that you, well, that you are the God of every blessing. That you are the fount of every joy. That you are the joy or the source of every good thing. And so God, I ask that you'll show us how to bless those people around us with our words and with our prayers. And I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. There'll be several of us on staff at the Welcome Center as you come in. I want to meet some of you. I haven't had a chance to meet very many of you. So if you'd stop by there, I would love to meet with you. Also, if you want to sort of know what the next step is, you might have been playing around with this Christianity thing or just looking at it from kind of afar, and you want to know what the next step is, Come by the Welcome Center and say to one of our, the staff that's there, say, so what's the next thing I need to do so that we can sort of move you in that direction? Also, don't forget the picnic last, next week. And I think that's it. Okay, so are you ready? Stand to your feet. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, you can go home now. Thanks a lot.